Hello and welcome to Let's Talk HR with Dr. Deneen, the talk show where we spotlight HR professionals and discuss all things HR. Employees are often said to be the best assets of an organization. Finding the right talent can be the difference between success and failure in many organizations. Internships can be one vehicle to find the right talent and to assist your organization in building talent pipelines over time. Ultimately, implementing internships into your talent management strategy can be one of the most important initiatives an organization can undertake and can result in a positive return on investment. The key to finding the right talent is to start early through the use of internships. Internships, that's our topic today, a future return on today's investment. And the person who can help us learn more about this topic is HR faculty member, Dr. Kathy Tuberville, the Director of Experiential Learning at the University of Memphis. How are you doing today? Dr. Lester, thank you for having me. I am doing great and so excited to be here. I am so glad. And you have on your tiger blue. Always. I don't have any other colors in my closet. I tell you, listen, this is what she does all the time. I wore blue just because I knew she was wearing blue. But let's talk about you for a minute, okay? You are one of the most popular, I would say, accomplished, award-winning educators, especially in HR and business. Would you agree with that? Well, you're kind. <laughs> uh, people have been kind to, to give me those awards and I appreciate it, feel blessed. Yes. Well, tell us about your professional journey. Well, I started out actually in marketing and advertising and at a certain point I decided I really wanted to go into higher education. I started at Crichton College where I was there for about 14 years and was associate dean wow. uh, of the business department okay. there. And then I moved over uh, to the University of Memphis in 2011. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time working with mm -hmm. internships and mm -hmm. then moved into the Fogelman College of Business. I'm in the management department where yes. we have just uh, developed a brand new HR major and we're wow. very excited. And I'm also the faculty advisor for our SHRM student chapter at the University of Memphis. So very excited to be here, very excited to work in, uh, with students and help them with their future yes. and also teach in the classroom. Yes, yes a very prominent person in the HR community. So let's talk a little bit about pipelines and we're gonna get back to those topics that we talked about uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, it can be many pipelines to organizations, right? Succession planning, career path programs. How important are talent pipelines to an organization? I think today they're everything because we know that in many other professions, the growth rate is exceeding mm -hmm. our recruiting results. Mm -hmm. And for instance, in HR, it's been projected by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics that most HR positions will experience about a 7% growth per year yes. over the next few years. That's significant. Mm -hmm. Now factor in also the outcomes of the great resignation mm -hmm. and everyone is seeking to find talent. Mm -hmm. I actually talked to someone in Italy today. Oh wow, uh, tell us about it. In preparation for our study abroad program, we mm -hmm. have 25 students going to Italy for almost a month. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she said, I just want to prepare you since the pandemic, mm -hmm. not all of our vendors have necessarily had an easy time finding people to work. Yes. Do you have that problem? And I said, do we? <laughs> uh, because it doesn't make sense. The numbers don't really uh, align because we're back to almost a pre-pandemic mm -hmm. uh, unemployment rate, but we still have employers seeking talent. Who would have thought that Domino's Pizza would have an average advertising campaign right. where they are asking you to pick up your pizza and they will right. buy you a $3 tip. Absolutely. So I think that's a real sign of the times. It, it is a sign of the times and you've seen all types of uh, techniques and, and uh, tactics on some that employers are using, you know, bonus, signing bonuses. They're, they're, they're talking about, um, you come to us and in five months, you get a certain amount of money, six months, you get something else. Um, all types of things that are happening. And it's because of the great resignation. Candidates now, I would say, they, 
they have a choice in the field now. So they're using that to their advantage and that's okay. That is wonderful. So yeah. So in HR, the talent pipeline begins, but it's not where everybody thinks it is. Where does the talent pipeline for HR begin? Well, really savvy employers don't wait until students graduate and then begin to get them into the fold. Mm -hmm. They began a partnership with their local universities and colleges. Of course, I am partial mm -hmm. to one university, the University of Memphis. Hey, um, go Tigers, go! Go Tigers! <laughs> uh, but really, wherever you are in watching this show today, you need to partner with a strong university or college that has the programs that you need to find HR students. Mm -hmm. Get engaged with their SHRM student chapter. Begin to make uh, partnership opportunities happen. And then make sure that you are looking for internship opportunities when students are sophomores, mm -hmm. juniors, and seniors. As you grow them through mm -hmm. that time, mm -hmm. by the time they graduate and they're ready to work full time, they know your organization, Absolutely. they know your culture, they understand the HR principles and processes on a real world basis. Mm -hmm. Everything we do in the classroom is like a foundation right. for that real world or experiential opportunity mm -hmm. coming ahead. Mm -hmm. So that's why we feel really strong about making sure that they are getting engaged on multiple levels, whether it's job shadowing, whether it's in specific employer-based programming, whether it is helping them to network mm -hmm. uh, in various organizations like Sherm mm -hmm. Memphis, so that they begin to learn along the way mm -hmm. and their preparation isn't waiting for that onboarding right. when they first start. Right, right. So it's so important that uh, students get in on your organization and then learn the foundational things about your organization and it makes it so much of a smoother process in doing so. Now also I'm going to turn it just a little bit because I've got to talk about this. Uh, professional development of a student while they're in college is so important. I've seen it work, I've seen it happen, and we can talk about that. But there's a program at the University of Memphis that I know um, you prepare professionals, which you uh, headed for many, many years, and we've seen some of the top talent come out of there, and it's, it's the pro complete professional program. Tell me about that. Yes, it actually began in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we seek to do is for the School of Business, College of Business and Economics, we prepare them through a professional development certificate. And as it has grown, it is actually developed into three levels of certificates. So mm -hmm. they continue developing. And then that is in addition to their student professional associations like SHRM, Student Chapter, or the American Market association, student chapter, uh, financial planning. We have them in all the different disciplines. Mm -hmm. And the goal with this is they begin to see where they might go. Yes. And for instance, in our accounting uh, major, students have a program called the Accounting Careers of Tomorrow program. Okay. Where we partner with one of the oldest CBA firms in our area, mm -hmm. uh, Reynolds, Bone and Griesbeck. Yes. And they go and spend a full day okay. at RBG. And it's a great collaborative program because RBG invites other accounting employers mm -hmm. to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Many, many great connections mm -hmm. started there. Mm -hmm. And we have students who have gained internships and full-time opportunities mm -hmm. by that connection in that professional development setting. Mm -hmm. That's a part of experiential learning. Yes. Because they walk into RBG. All right. That's where the event is held. Yes. And they begin to see, I could do this. Yes. I could be an accountant. Yes. Same thing with our HR Academy mm -hmm. and our HR Discovery Day. HR Discovery Day this year is being hosted uh, by AutoZone in the yes. city of Memphis. Yes. And the students will actually travel downtown. Mm -hmm. We will go, we'll ride the trolley down to the city of Memphis mm -hmm. where their HR professionals will share what they do. Yes. It's a day in the life of HR. Yes. And then we'll go down to the other side of the main strip Main Street Strip, and we'll visit AutoZone and their professionals will share. Mm -hmm. So they get a full day's orientation into what HR mm -hmm. professionals really do. Yes. You can't get that from a book. You, you get the foundation from the book. But once they get into these conference rooms, training rooms, mm -hmm. uh, networking events, 
they become much more uh, engaged mm -hmm. with their future. Yes. They can begin to see, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And, and we, I'm just a firm believer that we have to engage much earlier mm -hmm. than we did 10, 15, 20 years right. ago, yeah. because those processes no longer meet our needs as right. an, in the at HR community. Yes, and what's so important is the, the student or the candidate comes almost already prepared job readiness. Uh, they're prepared for job readiness when they step in the door. And it's not when they've gone to school and graduated, it's even when they come into the internship program. And that's what I've seen. I've, I've vetted a, a number of students all over, but what I can find is that if they've had that professional development on the front end, uh, it shows up. So students, you wanna set yourself apart and become involved in those type of things that the university has to offer. But back to internships, they seem to be so successful in organizations and in colleges and universities. How important are they? And what are some of the success stories in this arena with internships? Well, first of all, I would say my advice to any employer, particularly HR employers, is that you have to be strategic. The most successful internships are not a one-off internship. They right. are a program mm -hmm. and they are strategically aligned with your staffing plan mm -hmm. and they are structured. One of the reasons accounting internships work so well is they actually, in many public accounting firms, will identify them in their career pathing. Mm -hmm. So it's intern, associate, senior, supervisor. Right. And the intern is actually listed in that career path. Yes. So we want to, to move that way with HR and many mm -hmm. organizations mm -hmm. are doing that. Mm -hmm. Another great way to do this is to have rotational programs. Yes. So let's say you have a 12 month internship. You have the intern work maybe for 12 weeks in your recruiting area. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have them move then to total rewards, comp mm -hmm. and benefits. Mm -hmm. Maybe they then move to learning and development. Absolutely. And maybe then they move to HRIS mm -hmm. or possibly mm -hmm. employee relations. Mm -hmm. That way you see where their skill sets fit mm -hmm. and they see the actual role of those positions mm -hmm. and what best meets their career interests. Now it's a win-win to me, Dr. Lester, yes. because internships are like the new interview. Ah, and it's really I like that. the new interview are the internships. And that's what really happens. Yeah. You're getting to see this. And what's what's so safe about this? Sometimes employers will say, but I just don't know if I want to let this student go. Well, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Internships, unlike permanent positions, mm -hmm. internships generally are semester based. Okay. So if the student says, hmm, I don't think this is the, the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. The semester ends, everybody bids their adieu mm -hmm. and they go their different paths. Mm -hmm. There is not a quote termination. Mm -hmm. The right. internship ends and yes. hopefully on really good terms mm -hmm. so that they might be referred somewhere mm -hmm. else. We offer academic credit for our HR internships Mm -hmm. And so they get three hours credit. So the employer is part of the teaching team. Yes. And I supervise those internships. So if there's an issue, they, the employer can pick up the phone and say, I think this student needs a little coaching on, from your end. Can yes. you do that? Well, then I'm there to help with that. So that's a real safe zone for the employer. And then as their program grows, and I've seen so many organizations really enhance their program every year, mm -hmm. it becomes a great professional development opportunity yes. because they have lunch and learns, as mm -hmm. an example, mm -hmm. uh, with their HR directors. One of the things that they also do is if that employer is active in Sherm mm -hmm. Memphis, they bring them mm -hmm. to the Sherm Memphis events, which is a great opportunity. Oh, great opportunity. Um, we also encourage them once the student graduates to be a part of our Sherm Memphis mm -hmm. emerging leaders. And then the thing that really happens is that has become such a cohesive process mm -hmm. that by the time they are really ready to assume a full-time position, there are no surprises about who the company is to right. the student, mm -hmm. nor the student to the company. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's just a very well-oiled machine. We do a lot of kind of strategic consulting mm -hmm. uh, from the HR perspective with our HR employers mm -hmm. to try to help them say, how do we develop this? Mm -hmm. And I also collaborate a lot with Dr. Robert Schindel yes. uh, from Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. um, the CEO of Intern Bridge. Mm -hmm. And we work together to help colleges outside of Memphis mm -hmm. as well really know how to help employers think about this strategically. Mm -hmm. In the college environment, okay. and you know this from being my professional advisor with the Sherm Student Chapter, Dr. Yes. Dr. Lister, most students today mm -hmm. are fragmented across several different parts of life. They're okay. no longer a true full-time student. Right, they Even, have other things, other interests. And so when they come to us, it's like a divided attention, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we want to try to do is to find those folks that are not connected. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Schindel's research identifies that at minimum, uh, based on his surveys, mm -hmm. a minimum of 35% of students say they would never consider an internship unless some faculty or some advisor help guide them toward that direction. Okay. And that's what the Fogelman College of Business is really very focused and intentional on. Mm -hmm. I specifically with HR interns, mm -hmm. but our whole college in terms of finance and mm -hmm. accounting mm -hmm. and looking at mm -hmm. all of the different areas so that we prepare them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a whole different arena of mm -hmm. students today. They're bright, they're capable, but for multiple reasons, mm -hmm. Their experience in the classroom is not their only experience today. Yes. So we have to help them and we need to find that that bell curve of the students yes. that need our guidance and support. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that internships are a success and they can be successful. Um, speaking from experience, we have had uh, interns um, in um, organizations where I've worked before and even now. And I can tell you, they can just walk into an entry level position. There's not an awful lot of prepping that you have to do and they are top notch. So we know they work and we know that they can help your organization. And it's the student can also find out what their particular niche is. When you talked about the HR, rotational type programs, you can find what your niche is and you don't start a job and figure out, yeah, I don't really like that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. So it's such an advantage to everybody else. So what we found that many people and get into HR by happenstance, right? <laughs> Meaning that they've majored in similar disciplines, but not in HR. But I think you have some really exciting information to tell us about the University of Memphis that is going to impact the entire HR world. Tell us about it. Well, we are so excited, Dr. Lester. Under the direction of Dr. Kurt Krager, my department chair and interim associate dean, our team mm -hmm. uh, of HR faculty put together a proposal which was approved yes. with the support of many, including you, uh, employers in, in the Memphis area to, to change our HR concentration, somewhat like a minor, Yes, but change that to a full HR major. Yes, full and HR major. University of Memphis, outstanding. And so we expect the results to be incredible because they will have more coursework. Mm -hmm. They will still be required to do an experiential learning activity, mm -hmm. either an internship or an independent study that's mm -hmm. a career-based mm -hmm. uh, research project related okay. to HR. Okay. And so we think that they will be graduating with even more skills. Mm -hmm. The thing that we also want to do is we want to continue to engage with the HR community. So yes. Uh, Dr. Krager has been incredibly supportive of mm -hmm. having our faculty and students mm -hmm. uh, supported in the Sherman Memphis uh, meetings and events. Mm -hmm. uh, we also really want to encourage our students to take advantage of all the Sherm student chapter meetings, Absolutely. all of those types of things that really make a difference. And we just are so appreciative of all of our employer base, uh, International Paper, Centos, City mm -hmm. of Memphis, the Croc Center, yes. uh, AutoZone, all of those organizations have been in, 
incredibly important to this. And I want to go back to one point. Go back. When we all work together yes. and we make this puzzle of HR internships really come together, yes. what we're going to likely find is we're going to hit the national average of what we call intern to full-time conversion. Okay. According to the National Association of Colleges and Employers, all right. about 68% mm -hmm. of interns are converted into full-time hires wow. by the companies. That's outstanding. And what we're finding is University of Memphis is pretty close to that okay. already, uh, particularly in the College of Business. Mm -hmm. So it is a tremendous way for you to start those pipelines. That was one of the first things you talked about in the in our time together yes. was the pipeline. Yes. Start your pipelines mm -hmm. with your appropriate college and university and be strategic about that. Yes. Don't think of it as just a summer intern. Mm -hmm. It's much more than that if you want to have mm -hmm. these kinds of really robust results. Absolutely. That is absolutely wonderful. Now, you talked about the major. Who is the ideal student for this major? Well, are we, the ideal candidate. We believe that you have to be a people person. Okay. <laughs> uh, to some degree. And of course, this varies, but we often find that um, in our past structure that we would have folks from different majors want to have a minor in mm -hmm. HR, and the concentration was limited to majors in the college business. We encourage people in psychology to have double majors yes. through this, uh -huh. because that's a very nice blend. Mm -hmm. Many of our MBA students often go into HR, and one of the things that we are cultivating is our BIT and MSIS majors. Mm -hmm. Many of them come to our SHRM student chapter events, mm -hmm. and they are perfect candidates for HRIS and okay. information. Yes. Absolutely. And so there is, just like we're seeing in the workplace, we're increasing that funnel. All right. We're increasing the funnel for the major as well. Um, I think the biggest thing in terms of who becomes a great candidate for that major is if they can learn early enough, mm -hmm. which is part of what the program I'm working with mm -hmm. now more, mm -hmm. if they can explore soon enough yes. what their interests are, yes. they will know where they want to go. Mm -hmm. I right now have a student, I'm actually teaching a career development class for accounting, mm -hmm. and there's a student in that class who is so people-oriented. He happens yes. to be a member of our marching band, and he's a double major in accounting wow. and HR. Uh, yeah our new major to be. And so one of the things he's been really thinking, how can I use accounting in the HR world? Wow. We know. We know. Compensation and benefits would Absolutely. be huge. Absolutely, it would be. It would be huge. Even right data now. analytics would be great. And I'm glad you mentioned data analytics because our new major has a data analytics course, mm -hmm. plus it has a diversity, equity, and inclusion course. Okay. So that all of our students who come through that program will have that additional training over and above the traditional topics. So we've really tried to be innovative with that major. Uh -huh. uh, we're trying to be innovative with their experiential learning. Yes. And just to quickly define experiential learning, it is helping students learn by doing learning by doing. Okay. And so if you get out and you have uh, an experience with an employer like HR Discovery Day, mm -hmm. think of what that tells you about, gosh, I understand more about this career path now mm -hmm. and I, I want to pursue it. Learning by doing, that is the key. Learning by doing. It used to be learn first, do later. Learning by doing. That's what we're talking about today. Dr. Tuberville, thank you so much for coming out today. This has been wonderful. HR, interested candidates, students, adults, you have it here. So, wow, it's been a wonderful learning experience today. Uh, we received valuable information from one of the best in the education and building of HR talent pipelines in this in this city and through internships. As HR professionals, it's important to understand how talent impacts organizations and how valuable it is to have the right talent in the right places. But what we've learned today, you can start early with students and internships to build those talent pipelines that you're all looking for.
Be sure to watch Let's Talk HR with Dr. Deneen every second and fourth Friday starting at 8 a.m. on the YouTube channel of the same name. If you want to go to the YouTube channel and look at other episodes, you can do that. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you would like to be notified when new episodes post. I encourage you to go to the Sherm Memphis website and register to attend the Sherm Legal Conference on April 19th. Earn 17 credits in person or attend virtually through on-demand learning until June 15th. You do not want to miss this conference. I'm Dr. Deneen Lester, and I want to talk HR with you. HR forever. See you next time.